You brewed your coffee, your headphones are on and your setup is perfect, but your mind is still wandering. You can't focus. Focus is like a superpower and the people who can do it for long hours get way more done than the rest of us. In this video, I want to talk to you about how I'm trying to improve my focus and how you can do the same. Have a single focus. We know that we need to focus on learning to code, but it's so hard to do it when there's so many things that you'd rather be doing. There's options everywhere like going out to hang out with your friends, watching TV or playing video games. Deciding to sit down and focus on coding is already a big challenge in itself. For me, the most fun thing about coding has always been learning new skills and building things. It's so easy to get sidetracked by new tutorials and new tech. I came across something called decision fatigue where you basically get drained by every single decision that you make. And I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure that I need the most amount of energy when I'm trying to study code. I don't want to waste anything on small decisions that are unnecessary. If you're just starting out, a really good way to focus on a single task is to have it written out on a piece of paper in front of you. So for me as a beginner, I would have written out, finished the chapter in the Odin project on learning Git. And anytime I would get sidetracked by different tutorials or other distractions, I would always come back to that specific goal. And I'm trying to take this into my working day too. Minimize distractions. A while ago, I watched a really good documentary called The Social Dilemma and almost immediately uninstalled Instagram. Now I've since reinstalled and uninstalled this app about 10 times since, but the whole idea of the documentary was that social media are trying to manipulate us and try and keep us on the app as long as possible scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. I don't know about you, but I have this unconscious habit that as soon as I get a, a moment of boredom or frustration, I just pick up my phone and start scrolling. So what I've been trying to do recently is I noticed that on my phone, I have the option to set modes. So you can have like a work mode, a sleep mode, or just a free time mode. And the idea is I set it up. So anytime I wanna work, all notifications are turned off, all social apps are disabled, and the screen is actually in black and white. And what that does is it makes it less tempting. You look at it, it's like looking at an old newspaper. So it's not as attractive. And that just cuts out a lot of the distraction. Now I'm pretty sure your phone has the same options too. And if it doesn't, you could always just leave it in a different room to prevent those kind of distractions. Because having your phone next to you is almost never helpful. Use the right tools. Have you ever heard the phrase that if your room is a mess, then your mind probably is too? Well, that stops you from focusing too. I know you probably feel the same, but when you clean up your room after kind of procrastinating it for a while, you always feel like a weight has been lifted. It's suddenly a nice place to sit. Well, the same thing goes for when you're trying to focus on your work or your learning journey too. Setting up my space to look, feel and smell nice has actually made it much easier to sit down and focus. I've also invested in having the right tools. I recommend that you do the same if you have the means. One of the things that I did that really has helped is to just elevate the laptop by putting it onto this little stand. I also have a mouse and keyboard here that I can sit upright. And for me, it's like sitting into a car. Suddenly, like it's like adjusting your mirrors. So you're already in the mode of driving a car if it's a car, but now I'm in the mode to focus on coding because everything is where it should be and the whole vibe here is setting me up to focus. On the same kind of a topic as getting into the zone, routine is really important and it's something I'm trying to cultivate myself. Before learning to code or anything like that, I was actually a sports scientist and later a science teacher. And I learned a lot about a thing called circadian rhythm and it's basically your body clock. So the most famous one is the wake sleep cycle where you wake up and go to sleep at the same time. You've probably had a similar experience where you woke up just before your alarm went off. And that's where we've actually trained our body clock to do a certain thing. Well, the same thing can work with your hormones and with your mind. After reading a really good book called Atomic Habits by James Clear, I started to do a thing called habit stacking, which is where I do one thing and then immediately do another thing. So something that I do every single day is I make really good fresh coffee. And now immediately after I come and I sit down to focus and to code. It's like I've trained my body to focus immediately after the taste of coffee. And now it's much easier to just sit into my chair and get to work. I'm not a massive gamer, but I have experienced being stuck on a level that I just couldn't get past. And you've probably been in a similar situation yourself. Have you ever noticed that you've been trying for ages and you just can't get through it, but then you decide, okay, I'm gonna walk away, gonna take a break, have a stretch, go to the toilet, whatever. And then you come back and suddenly, boom, you know how to do it. You've figured out the strategy. That time away from the screen has actually helped you overcome it. 
And that's the value of taking breaks. Taking breaks is crucial to improving your focus and maintaining it long term. But it's really easy to forget to take breaks when you get into the zone of focus. One hack I've always found really helpful is to just always have a bottle of water with me on the table. And the value of that is as you sip away, you're not really thinking about it, but eventually nature calls and you have to go to the toilet. This toilet break after drinking your water is actually a natural reminder to get out of the chair and walk around a little bit. Getting up for the toilet break and walking away and then coming back is a nice easy way to integrate a break and you'll never miss a break if you have a water bottle on your table. It's a win-win because you stay hydrated and you stay sharp every time you want to focus again. Finally, practice mindfulness. Now, we've all probably heard this everywhere at this stage. Meditation is a good thing. Being in the moment is a good thing. But to be honest, I've always struggled with that. The other day I was working on a React app and it just wasn't working. I was making adjustments to the CSS or something and it just nothing was updating it. So I turned it off and then on again, just restarted the server. And it got me thinking a little bit more deeply about my own mind and how turning it on and then off again is probably a good option for your brain too. So one thing I'm trying to incorporate is to just take a breather. So I'll set the alarm on my phone for four minutes because it's not a huge number, but it's probably enough to relax. And now if I'm struggling with focus or my mind is wandering, I'll just sit back into the chair, take a deep breath and breathe and just relax for four minutes. And what I found is that all of that strings of thought that were not related to what I needed to focus on would just fade away into the background. So taking that time to just relax and breathe can really bring you into the present moment and help you focus and get into that zone a lot easier. Focusing isn't easy, but I just wanted to share with you some of the stuff that I've been trying to improve my focus and to stay in the zone for longer. If you have any suggestions, I would love to see them down in the comments. It not only boosts the algorithm, but it's also going to teach me and other people who are interested in this content different techniques that we can bring into our lives. If you want to learn more about how I hacked my brain to learn coding in the first place, you can check out this video here. If you're really interested in regular tips and getting them in your inbox, you can subscribe to my Substack as well. That's enough plugs for now. Thank you for watching. Ciao.